Oh, you good? All right. Hi, class. My name's Robert. I'm Robert. Okay. Robert. I decided to do mine on marijuana, right? You guys might be saying, oh, that's a little bit easy, et cetera, et cetera, right? But the reason I decided to do the marijuana was because I'm getting a lot of cases with a lot of youth that are using marijuana. So I said, if I'm going to do a research, I want to use it something that's going to benefit me in my profession so I can be able to help the youth. So to start it off, I said, let me look into some articles. And there was about 20 articles that came up in the database in Equifolks. And the three I chose were um, trends in single duo and poly use of alcohol, cigarettes, and marijuana among US high school students. Number two was effective self-regulation trajectories during secondary school, predict substance use among urban minority young adults. And the third article was the role of demographic marginalization and social emotional distress, right? The data was collected from the natural youth risk behavior surveys and telephone interviews, and also questionnaires were distributed in regular classroom periods by personal staff, right? So after they did all the distribution and everything, they came out with their findings. So for me, I found five, five things that are very important, and then also at the end, what are we doing to prevent these youth from using the drug, right? So one of the findings that I found very interesting was continued use of marijuana results in poor academics, performance, relationship difficulties, risky sexual behavior, and aggressive and violent behavior, right? The number two that I found interesting was juvenile arrest for drug use in juveniles also was on the rise. I wanted to bring data, but I kind of went over my head. But a lot of the data was Latino and black youth were the ones that were mainly going, getting arrested. And then the reason they're getting arrested is because if it becomes an addiction, they continue to use where they're gonna find money to use a drug. Go to the street, they rob somebody, we get in trouble, whatever it is, and stuff like that. One of the things that we're doing in our agency is that is a thing called CPYMU, which is a model. That what we try to do is to prevent what's going on is we work with the uh, New York City Department of Probation. So the reason it's called crossover youth is because if the child, say for instance, is in child welfare, right? The child now gets arrested for drugs or whatever it is, now it's considered a crossover youth because he has contact with the police department. So what the parole, what the police department does is they let ACS know that this juvenile just got arrested for drugs. What ACS does is they pass it over to all the preventive agencies and we also get a report what's going on. So what is the point? The point is now the Department of Probation, instead of the case going to the judge, the Department of Probation with Child Welfare, which is us in probation, we create a conference where we work collectively together to create a plan within three months, within, I'm sorry, within 90 days to six months to see the progress of that child with the drug use or whatever the situation is. If it becomes, if it becomes that the child um, completes all the services, the, the case gets sealed. If the child continues to use the drugs, it goes over probation and it gets presented to the judge. So I think it's a great thing because not only is preventing the children from going to prison and saving money as well, but we also catch them early as a yes. of view. So I just wanted to bring that up to the things that we do to try to help them. Intervention. intervention, right? So moving forward, number three was youth who struggle with psychological distress, anxiety, perceived powerlessness, and other negative emotions engage in more illicit drug use. Number four, Adolescents with serious emotional problems were twice likely to use marijuana, four times as likely to use illicit drugs compared to youth with low levels of emotional problems. So what is it saying? A lot of the kids or the youth that are using drugs is because they have emotional distress and they have a lot of things going on, right? One of the things that I also found was that a lot of them go into using marijuana, like the professor says, to cover that pain because they want to have a sense of value or a sense of recognition in school or acceptance, right? So if they don't get accepted in school, whatever they do, their mood goes down, they go into depression, moves, symptoms and stuff like that, and they begin to use drugs. So I think that's very important, you know, knowing that there's a possibility that they're doing that if they feel that way. Mm -hmm. So now, 
after doing these four findings or results, right, you might be asking yourself, well, Robert, good findings, but what are we collectively doing to help this population address the use of marijuana, right? Mm -hmm. One of the findings were that more preventive actions and interventions are being executed early in the young adults' lives across the United States. And one of them will be obviously the one that I presented of what we're doing in our agency and of course all the agencies in New York City with the crossover youth model, right? Mm -hmm. um, another thing is doing extensive research on this topic and having preventative um, plans in place early should reduce the amount of marriage usage. Furthermore, it will contribute to an overall well-being to this population. And that's my favorite.